part of this process because we see the, the future of what uh, Bitcoin and what blockchain means uh, to the, the entire world. Texas wants to be the centerpiece of that. And so we, we are promoting it. We are advancing it. Uh, but I would say we're providing the platform uh, for, for those who are involved in blockchain, for those who are involved in uh, Bitcoin, uh, to, to make sure that they're going to have a, a location they can come to uh, that does not have the sense of friction that comes along with high regulation. Mm-hmm. So that makes the ease of business far better uh, and it promotes that innovation. So uh, we will continue advancing in Bitcoin and blockchain uh, is the cutting edge of innovation in the world right now. Absolutely. And the ethos of Texas, you know, one of independent thinking and a can-do attitude aligns really well with the spirit of Bitcoin. So tell us a little bit more about what you have been doing to make Texas Bitcoin country. Well, in in addition to uh, making it open and and inviting for people here, we actually, this past session, we passed some laws to make it uh, far better. We, We created uh, a working group to make sure that uh, we're going to be focused on uh, the type of legislation that will make it more inviting. Understand this, and that is when, when Texas engages in legislation, we, we don't want to be over-regulatory. We, we're kind of anti-regulation, but we want to provide an infrastructure uh, mm-hmm. to make sure uh, that, that blockchain and, and Bitcoin will be able to uh, succeed. So, Governor, um, the demand response program and the world-leading Texas energy industry, what have you seen the Bitcoin mining industry been able to do when they come in and they partner with oil and gas, they partner with you know, the executives at ERCOT in the demand response uh, capabilities of curtailing that load. How, what, how has that benefited Texas and the grid? Mm-hmm. So first, you mentioned demand response, which is kind of a sophisticated knowledge about the way the whole process works that your viewers may not know uh, what you're talking about. Let me explain to that and plug it into uh, you, what's Scott. going on in the grid. When, when you refer to demand response, generally speaking, what that refers to is that in Texas, for your viewers who may not know, uh, we have an open, independent power grid. Um, most states, if not all states, have a uh, heavy regulated uh, power structure, so they have a, a kind of a singular utility program in their state. Texas doesn't have that. We have a, a free market system uh, in the state of Texas uh, where people get to go purchase power uh, from the lowest power provider, the lowest cost power provider. And now w- when we do that, uh, uh, what, what happens is that there can be so much demand for power uh, at, at times of a high need for power, such as in a, a heavy winter storm, uh, there needs to be a demand response so that people who don't really need power uh, for a few hours or a, a day or so, uh, they, they can ratchet back on the, their power demand. So that's the demand response so that uh, Bitcoin uh, uh, th- those who make Bitcoin or Ethereum, whatever the case may be, uh, listen, a, a, a few hours of lost power uh, is, is not going to destroy their business, whereas it, it could with the hospital or something like that. So here's, here's the way that it works, and that is with all of, of the Bitcoin miners in the state of Texas, it is good for our power grid system in this sense, and that is it creates more demand on an ongoing basis, and uh, that provides the investment incentive uh, for power generators to come invest more to create more power in the state of Texas uh, while working at the same time where there are, uh, the Bitcoin miners are able to, to ratchet back if there is a need uh, for surplus power uh, to keep essential services online. And so it works hand in hand. It's, it's, it's great for the Bitcoin miners mm-hmm. to have, have access to, uh, if not the lowest cost, one of the lowest cost uh, of power in, in the entire world, right. uh, while at the same time being able to uh, generate even more power generation that will lower the cost even more. Absolutely. And when we have that increased generation, that increased base load, and the, the peaks are getting shaved off the demand, you know, off of the duck curve, that can only be beneficial for Texas power prices. Consumers will, because of that increased supply, have lower power prices. All right, guys.